My name is Amy Sullivan, and I'm the chair of the AAAR Endowment Committee. It's my pleasure to welcome you to um, the seventh in our monthly series of ASNT paper lectures. This is a new initiative for AAAR being supported by the Freelander Memorial Fund. <clears throat> With this new initiative, uh, we hope to be able to highlight the amazing research happening in our community, tie our journal to other activities, and also give us an opportunity to all come together outside of the annual conference. So each month, the editors of ASMT select a high impact paper to be presented by its author. These lectures are being recorded, and you can find them posted to AAAR's new YouTube channel, which you can access through AAAR's website under the events tab. In addition, each month we have one of our AAAR student chapters hosting, and they've also started a journal club that meets usually the week before in order to discuss the paper to be presented. So I want to thank everyone who's made these possible and also for all of you for joining us. And so now we'll turn it over to our student chapter from the University of Cincinnati to get us started. Thanks. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are in the world right now. Um, my name is Christina Kander, and I am a fourth year PhD student at the University of Cincinnati studying industrial hygiene. My peer, Thomas Gerding, and I are very pleased to be facilitating this month's AAAR seminar so without further ado, please let me introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Christopher Chow from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Hong Kong in Hong Kong, China. Dr. Chow will be presenting on the short range bioaerosol deposition and recovery of viable viruses and bacteria on surfaces from a cough and implications for respiratory disease transmission. I ask all participants to enter his or her questions in the chat box, and we will get to them at the end of the seminar. Thank you and welcome Dr. Chow. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I uh, moved to a new place uh, starting from uh, September. I used to be uh, with the University of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, starting from uh, September, I took up a uh, administration position serving as uh, vice president of uh, research and innovation at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. But I'm still holding a uh, uh, honorary uh, faculty position at the University of Hong Kong. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, talk about a uh, topic which is uh, very interesting to me. Uh, the title of my talk is a bit uh, long. Uh, it is based on a uh, paper that we uh, published in ASNT uh, last year. Uh, we will look at short range bioaerosol deposition and uh, recovery of viral viruses and bacteria on uh, services uh, originated from uh, a cough. And we will also look at uh, the implications for respiratory disease uh, transmission. Uh, at the beginning, I'd like to share a bit about the background and uh, motivation of this uh, study. And uh, after uh, showing you some uh, results, uh, I will also look into a number of uh, applications and also will share with you some of my uh, thinking of what uh, future will we are uh, able to be uh, doing um, later. All right. so. Um, we hope that this uh, research can uh, contribute uh, a little bit to uh, tackle the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the first outbreak of the COVID-19 started in uh, November uh, 2019, if uh, we still uh, remember that. And the pandemic has been lasting for uh, more than one year. Uh, it's predicted to uh, keep going on uh, for a uh, certain period of time. Uh, the numbers in uh, this slide are not the most uh, updated one, uh, but we know that all numbers are uh, increasing. Uh, now there have been over 200 million confirmed cases all over the world. To mitigate or uh, to end uh, such a severe situation, uh, what can we do in uh, aerosol research? Uh, as a researchers in uh, this area, we uh, hope that we are able to uh, keep finding uh, 
solutions or keep finding results that are able to help to contribute uh, to uh, part of the uh, mitigation. Uh, our team has some uh, experience in uh, studying respiratory uh, bioaerosol transmission in uh, different building environments. This particular paper is a part of our latest uh, research in understanding and uh, curbing the uh, virus transmission uh, among uh, people. All right, um, I think uh, many of you are very uh, familiar with uh, the information I'm trying to uh, share here. There are, well, roughly speaking, there are uh, basically uh, a few different modes in uh, respiratory disease uh, transmission. Of course, uh, sometimes the definition uh, may not be uh, very uh, clear. Uh, these uh, cause the spread of the viruses among uh, people. Uh, some researchers may have a different classification method and uh, we find a number of uh, the routes of uh, transmission, but generally the three modes are uh, airborne mode, uh, droplet mode and uh, contact mode. Small aerosols can suspend in air for a long period of time, and uh, they can be dispersed in, uh, into uh, different areas in a room. Inhalation of such airborne aerosols will cause infection, and this is defined as uh, airborne mode uh, generally. Uh, jobless or especially uh, larger aerosols can directly be sprayed on facial membranes such as eyes, mouth, or our nose, and can cause infection if they contain uh, viruses. This is called a uh, droplet root in general. The aerosols can deposit on environmental surfaces or body surfaces. So contact mode describes when people touch these contaminated surfaces by our hands and then touch uh, our facial membranes. Uh, when two people are close to each other, all these three different modes may be important. Uh, for a longer distance, the transmission is mainly from uh, airborne mode and contact mode. Traditionally, uh, we uh, come across some numbers, say 1.8 meter. Uh, sometimes we use it to define uh, the so-called social distance or um, the short range. Uh, but actually, uh, we know that there's no very clear cut uh, definition. And uh, many of these uh, have a lot to do with the size of the aerosol and uh, the transport uh, mechanism uh, itself. Uh, a number of research uh, have been studied for the aerosol or about aerosol dispersion and deposition at a long range situation in different indoor environments. For example, um, we studied uh, the aerosol transportation in a hospital. Uh, what, uh, this study was done uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, both the dispersion in air and deposition on surfaces were characterized by experimental and numerical approaches. Uh, poorly dispersed cough droplets uh, were released from uh, vertical and lateral uh, directions respectively. And it was found that dispersion of smaller aerosol was mainly affected by the background ventilation, while big aerosols were mainly dominated by inertial and gravitational forces. However, there's no universal cutoff diameter for the so-called large droplet. In fact, uh, expiratory droplets with initial size um, as large as 45 micron in our experiment uh, has been observed to still exhibit the possibility for being airborne to some extent, and uh, their transport is affected uh, strongly uh, by the room air flow. Um, around 10 years ago, we also looked into the uh, bioaerosol dispersion and leakage in uh, an isolation ward uh, in a hospital. Uh, negative pressure is uh, supposed to isolate the ward and protect people at outer area. The possibility of a leakage of bioaerosol uh, during door opening and human movement was estimated in our experiment done uh, you know, uh, in this study. Uh, bacterium E. coli was added into saliva solution 
uh, and was used to characterize the leakage of bio aerosol. In order to simulate a VU situation, it was found that leakage was less than 1% when the door was closed in a uh, properly designed uh, environment. Uh, however, when a healthcare worker uh, enters and uh, exits the isolation walk, uh, around 3% of the aerosol were actually uh, observed to transport from the empty room uh, to the corridor. This indicates that the negative pressure is effective, but uh, caution should be taken when door opening uh, with uh, human movement uh, occurs. So uh, some of these issues uh, are uh, interesting uh, issue that uh, we need to uh, pay attention uh, to in our study. Uh, this is also uh, from a uh, previous uh, study. Uh, we look at aerosol dispersion in an aircraft uh, cabin by uh, using numerical and experimental methods. Uh, it was found that the aerosols took uh, like 20 to 30 seconds to occupy the space within two rows because of their high velocity. And then they were uniformly uh, distributed in a whole uh, cabin. The deposition ratio of uh, the aerosol on the front seat uh, was around 35 minutes in some cases, and it was even much higher than uh, the deposition on uh, the other seats. It indicates that the short range exposure or deposition is much higher than the long range ones in uh, these particular uh, areas. So this is um, why we are uh, very interested in looking further uh, into uh, short range, uh, you know, uh, transport of the uh, aerosol. All right. Um, from all our previous studies, uh, uh, together with uh, research conducted by other uh, researchers, we learn a lot about uh, aerosols in uh, long-range uh, trans transport. Uh, aerosols in long-range uh, transports have a lower velocity, and the dispersion is mainly affected by uh, background ventilation. In short range, uh, the droplets travel for as a jet. Uh, they have higher uh, velocity and higher concentration. So a uh, person close to an infected person has a higher risk of infection via all airborne droplet and contact routes. Um, recently, uh, we uh, pay uh, more attention to the short range transmission in which there are three uh, destinations for the bio aerosol. Uh, they can go to a long range dispersion inhaled by a person nearby, or they can be deposited on a nearby uh, surface. And this paper focused on the short range deposition and uh, its corresponding contact transmission mode. I will share some information with you about that later. We are also uh, investigating the bio aerosol inhalation. Uh, but because of the time uh, limitation, those work will not be uh, covered uh, today. Uh, for contact transmission routes, there are three steps. Uh, bow aerosol deposition, hand touching, and then uh, infection. When the high-speed jet of a uh, droplet air mixture directly collides uh, with a surface, uh, the air spreading along the surface will affect the movement of the droplets. The relative distance, the relative angle between the jet and the front surface will change the jet flow structure and may affect the bow aerosol flow dynamics, deposition, and distribution along the surface. Bow aerosol distribution on a surface plays a very important role in affecting disease transmission risk to the people through contact mode. Uh, in this paper, we mainly studied uh, the bio aerosol deposition on a front surface, uh, on a front flat surface. At the end of this talk, I will also present some of our, uh, you know, uh, latest uh, research on uh, bio aerosol deposition and uh, dispersion. So our objective are to look at the uh, direct deposition of uh, bio aerosol released from a uh, cough uh, to obtain the viable. Uh, bacterium, virus dis distributions uh, on the surface, 
And then uh, we view the coughing droplet flow field near the surface. The major results of this paper will be uh, shown first, and then some in implications and recommendations for uh, infection uh, control uh, will be uh, followed. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the methodology that we are uh, using here. You can refer to our uh, paper for uh, more detail. Uh, in this work, um, we used a custom made um, cough uh, generator to uh, simulate a uh, coughing uh, process. Uh, the machine has been uh, verified by uh, comparing with a real cough uh, based on data uh, from our previous work uh, uh, published a long time ago. Uh, this slide shows our previous work measuring the uh, parameters of a uh, real cough and are uh, speaking uh, using human uh, subjects. Uh, the PIV uh, technique, uh, short for particle image uh, symmetry, was employed to uh, measure the droplet velocity. Uh, the cough droplet velocity immediately near the mouth was found to be around 11.7 uh, meter per second in this uh, study, and the velocity of uh, speaking uh, droplets was around. Uh, 3.9 uh, meter per uh, second. Uh, the droplet size uh, from a cough uh, immediately from the mouth was uh, measured by uh, a uh, technique uh, called interferometric uh, me imaging. Uh, you may notice that this is the, the size, the droplet size uh, before evaporation. Uh, the droplet size uh, distribution uh, was plotted in the figure. Uh, as shown on the right-hand side. Uh, the geometric mean diameter of the core of droplets was around 13.5 micron. And these parameters of uh, the core of droplets were based on uh, human uh, volunteers uh, collected from a uh, study. Um, if you look at the left-hand side of this uh, slide, uh, the core generator was uh, built uh, based on uh, the atomization process, uh, you know, in a nozzle. It consists of an air system and a liquid system to provide a uh, mixture of cough air and saliva solution. Compressed air was used to uh, control and adjust the aerosolization process. Uh, in the experiment, the nozzle was put into the head of a, a thermal mannequin. And the cough generator by the machine was uh, validated by uh, comparing with the parameters of the real cough in our previous works. Uh, the PIV and the IMI techniques were used to measure the velocity and the size distribution of uh, the released uh, droplets from this generator. Uh, the comparison was shown uh, in the two figures on the right hand uh, side of uh, this uh, slide. Uh, the pit droplet size were found between 10 to 20 uh, micron, and the size distribution agreed uh, quite well with a real cough. Uh, the releasing velocity was around 12 meter per second, as shown uh, in the red uh, circle uh, here. Um, we use uh, benign uh, microorganisms uh, in this work uh, to uh, generate the uh, bio aerosol. Uh, both bacterial aerosols and uh, viral aerosols from a cough were, uh, were studied. Uh, e. coli was used to represent the bacterial uh, pathogens uh, inside cough droplets. A uh, pure string of uh, E. coli was first isolated by uh, using uh, the steak plate method. Uh, the E. coli was uh, cultured in uh, TSB solution in an incubator. Uh, for around 10 hours and then centrifuge to get an E. coli pellet. And then uh, the pellet was uh, suspended in uh, artificial saliva uh, solution with the help of uh, a vibration uh, motion. Uh, finally, uh, the solution uh, with bacteria was loaded into our cough generator to aerosolize uh, the, uh, for our experiment. And after the experiment, uh, the viable E. coli in samples were uh, enumerated by a uh, poor, uh, poor plate method. 
CVO dilution uh, was used to uh, find the bacterium uh, concentration uh, in a unit of uh, colony forming uh, unit CFU. So uh, the bacterial phase T3 was used uh, to represent the viruses inside uh, our cough uh, droplets. Uh, first, the high uh, titer fa phase solution was prepared and the fake uh, virus was uh, cultured in E. coli solution for around uh, 10 hours. The solution was uh, centrifuged for uh, two times uh, at different centrifuge, uh, centrifugal forces in order to purify the virus. Uh, then the virus solution was uh, stored in uh, our refrigerator for uh, later usage. For each experiment, a, a 0 0.1 milliliter a uh, high uh, titer solution was added into the saliva solution. And then it was uh, aerosolized by the cough uh, generator. And after the uh, experiments, uh, the viable viruses in uh, our samples were uh, enumerated by a top agar layer uh, method. A civil dilution was used to uh, find the virus concentration uh, also uh, in the unit of uh, PEC forming uh, unit PFU uh, in our work. All right, so um, I'm going to show you uh, some results uh, later. Uh, this slide shows show the experimental uh, setup, all right, uh, for uh, the cough uh, droplet uh, deposition. Uh, of course, we uh, simplify a lot the uh, real situation. Uh, in this work, we uh, study the basic scenario that a person was, uh, uh, when a person is facing a flat uh, surface like a uh, uh, computer, and uh, he or she uh, coughs a few times, uh, the relative distance and the relative angle between the jet and the front surface uh, were studied. We try out different uh, relative distance and uh, relative angle. Uh, the bioaerosol deposition and distribution on the plate uh, were characterized. The plate was made of PVC and the size was 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter. Uh, the surface was marked with each small sampling area of uh, four centimeter uh, by four centimeter. After the experiment, each sampling square was cut into two parts. The first part was put under a uh, microscope uh, to obtain the uh, uh, droplet number uh, distribution. The other part was used for uh, cultivation in order to understand uh, the level of the uh, viable uh, viruses. Um, this picture uh, shows the experimental setup in the lab. Uh, the near wall flow field is uh, useful for analyzing uh, the deposition process on the surface. Uh, we use PIV uh, technique to measure the flow field above the surface before the deposition. A laser sheet was set in uh, perpendicular to the surface in order to illuminate the droplets. A camera was uh, used to capture the movement of the droplets. And then uh, we use the PIV uh, software uh, to analyze the flow field uh, of the uh, droplet. All right, um, uh, the droplet uh, flow field was uh, measured by PIV, as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier. In this, in this, uh, in the case uh, uh, shown here, uh, the distance between uh, the person and the surface was uh, 50 centimeter and the relative angle was uh, 90 degrees. We can see that the cough jet has a width of around uh, 20 centimeter before in impingement. It directly impinged on the surface and then spread along the surface, forming wall attached uh, flow. The thickness of the wall attached flow was around three centimeter uh, above uh, the plate. Um, the droplet size uh, distribution was shown in this slide. The microscope images at the lower part of the plate uh, were displayed. At the center of, uh, of the plate, uh, when y was equal to uh, zero uh, on the y-axis, uh, where the cough directly in, 
pinch on. The droplet number concentration was high and the droplet size uh, was uh, larger, probably due to the inertial impaction in that position. At the position approaching the edge of the plate, for example, uh, when Y uh, was uh, 23.5 uh, centimeter, uh, the droplet size uh, and uh, the droplet number were uh, 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 decreased uh, gradually. The number distribution along the Y direction was shown in the figure on the right on the right hand side. Um, it is a unimodal uh, distribution. Uh, the number concentration for both the large and uh, small droplets at the middle area was uh, much higher than those in the other areas. By comparing with the flow field measured by PIV, uh, we can identify the middle area uh, as the impeachment area, indicating the importance of the flow structure uh, in uh, the droplet deposition. Um, we can also uh, calculated the uh, droplet volume that persisted on the surface by using a spherical uh, cap equation. Uh, the content angle of the deposited bow aerosol after the uh, completion of evaporation was measured using a uh, contact angle meter. The content angle was found to be around 56 uh, degrees for uh, RIRO-based uh, aerosols. Uh, then the bow aerosol or droplet volume was uh, estimated by uh, assuming a spherical cap shape. The droplet volume distribution along the surface was shown in the middle uh, figure here. Uh, we can see that it is a uh, unimodal uh, distribution as well. The distribution was uh, quite well captured by the still normal equation. Uh, the coefficients of the skew normal equation vary with the relative angle and uh, the distance between uh, the curved jet and the front uh, surface. Um, apart from uh, the droplet uh, volume uh, distribution, the viable virus concentration uh, can also be obtained by uh, cultivation using a uh, top agar layer method. Uh, the viable virus distribution along the surface was shown in this uh, slide. And uh, the virus distribution uh, also follows the skill uh, normal equation. We can see that the distribution was uh, similar to the droplet volume distribution. Uh, this indicates a strong relationship uh, between the viable virus concentration and the droplet uh, volume. Um, the size of the virus uh, uh, is around uh, 60 to uh, 200 nanometer, uh, but the size of bacterium is about one to uh, two uh, uh, micron, which is 10 times of the virus size as shown in this uh, image. Uh, for long range uh, study uh, indicates that the pathogen inside the airborne aerosols may affect the airborne dispersion uh, because of the change in the shape and uh, the aerodynamics uh, force. But how about uh, in uh, short range, would the bacterium and the virus inside uh, the droplet affect uh, the aerosol dynamics and uh, the deposition? This is uh, the question that uh, we would like to uh, look uh, further. Our uh, results uh, show that the bacterial uh, droplet volume uh, distribution was very similar to the viral uh, droplet distribution. It's because in uh, short range dispersion, the time of flight of the droplet is actually very short. Uh, so the time evaporation uh, is not uh, finished. The droplet size remains relatively larger than uh, the microorganisms uh, trapped inside, uh, keeping the droplet spherical in shape before the deposition. So uh, they have similar aerodynamic force and similar uh, deposition uh, pattern. It also indicates that the droplet volume distribution in this work is not uh, dependent on the pathogen uh, inside. Uh, then uh, based on the viable virus and uh, droplet volume, 
we can calculate uh, the virus survivability for uh, a number of cases. Uh, in the equation, uh, the numerator is the um, uh, PFU in the same size of droplet before uh, aerosolization. Uh, we can see that there was no clear relationship uh, between the survivability and the relative distance or angle. Uh, the virus survivability in the coughing and deposition process was around 18% in our study. Uh, since the impingement velocity for uh, you know, the distance of 20 centimeter to 110 centimeter range from five meter per second to uh, uh, less than one meter per second, it tells us that uh, the impingement velocity in this scale uh, does not have a very uh, significant effect on the virus uh, viability uh, for short range uh, deposition uh, based on our uh, data. Uh, this slide uh, shows how uh, the peak uh, position and uh, peak value of the viable virus concentration change with the relative distance and uh, the angle. Uh, the peak uh, position, uh, which is the position with the most uh, virus uh, deposited, uh, went downward in the y uh, direction uh, as distance d increased due to gravity. Uh, the peak value, which is the highest uh, value of uh, the virus concentration, uh, decreased exponentially as the distance uh, increased. Uh, it indicates that increasing the distance could reduce the deposition on the plate uh, surface. So we uh, identified that uh, the peak position of the virus uh, concentration corresponds to the region of uh, jet impingement. It was for, uh, around uh, 11 to 26 centimeter in width for the distance D from 20 to uh, 110 centimeter. Uh, respectively. It is not a large area, but it contains around 83% uh, of the volume of the deposited uh, uh, droplets. So cleaning and disinfection will be more effective if we uh, are able to identify uh, this uh, impingement uh, region. And then we pay special attention on, uh, uh, on this uh, particular region. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, is uh, useful uh, in future imp uh, implementation of some, uh, you know, a cleaning uh, procedure. Uh, the virus distribution uh, obtained in this work can be used to improve the accuracy of uh, risk assessment work, uh, risk assessment modeling. In assessing contact transmission uh, risk, uh, the Markov Train method was used to uh, calculate the virus transfer from uh, the surface to our facial membrane. Uh, then the dose infection response model uh, was used to calculate the risk of uh, contact. Uh, therefore, the information of a viable virus distribution on the surface is uh, very important because of the lack of the information uh, in previous risk assessment modeling. Uh, the virus is always assumed to be uh, uniformly uh, distributed on the nearby surfaces, which may induce certain errors in the analysis. Uh, in this work, we obtain more detailed uh, virus distribution on uh, the surfaces, which is highly non-uniform, in fact, indicating that the risk is uh, very different from, uh, you know, when we are touching uh, different uh, areas. So we used the surface, uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, situation uh, as an example uh, to illustrate, uh, you know, uh, uh, the results. Uh, let's assume that the virus concentration was 10 to the power seven uh, PFU per uh, milliliter. Um, according to uh, some uh, previous uh, research results uh, from uh, conducted by other researchers the touch uh, frequency on uh, our face was about uh, 20 times per hour. Uh, and the touch frequency on the body was about 8.3 8 point, 8 uh, times per hour. So if we use these uh, figures and if we uh, follow the previous modeling method by assuming that the virus distribution 
uh, on the surface, uh, on our face and our body are the same and they are uniformly uh, distributed. Uh, the infected risk was found to be around uh, 14%. Uh, percent. However, uh, now we are able to get the detailed uh, virus uh, distribution on our face and body. Uh, the risk uh, of contact, uh, you know, uh, if we do it again, we find that uh, it's now uh, about a 21%. Uh, percent. So the error because of the uniform assumption uh, is around uh, 33%, percent, which shows the importance of uh, quantifying uh, the virus uh, distribution uh, of the uh, of the surface. Uh, let me see. Um, okay. Uh, another uh, implication of uh, this uh, research is um, uh, the design of a uh, petition uh, barrier. You know, during the uh, pandemic uh, period, um, a lot of um, uh, petitions have been used to. Uh, uh, enhance uh, social distancing in uh, different places. Um, from the PIV uh, flow field, uh, we can see that the cough jet first directly uh, imprint on uh, the plate and then uh, spread along the surface. And it, it indicates that the plate can redirect the cough jet and uh, work as a uh, petition, in fact, to uh, protect the people at the back. Uh, this provides uh, somehow a, uh, a guideline uh, in setting up uh, petition barriers for disease uh, transmission uh, control. Uh, for a uh, farther distance, a higher petition is needed because the aerosol spreads uh, wider during the flight. When the distance are 20 centimeter, uh, 50 centimeter, 80 centimeter, and 110 centimeter, uh, the height of the petition uh, based on our uh, work seems to suggest that they have to be at least a uh, 10 centimeter, uh, 15 centimeter, 20 and 30 centimeter higher than the level uh, of the person's uh, mouth uh, respectively. So it should be noted that a partition barrier is used to block uh, droplet spray. However, it is not able to stop airborne transmission because some of the, you know, um, aerosol uh, may also, uh, you know, uh, uh, go to uh, other uh, places uh, in the room. Um, so we have applied uh, the results in a uh, um, research student center in uh, uh, our university. Um, uh, there's a student office for engineering a research student in uh, the University of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, this is an open type office with uh, an area close to uh, 750 square meters and can accommodate uh, uh, about 100 uh, research students. Um, during the uh, pandemic period, we, um, we uh, set up uh, partition uh, barriers uh, in the office um, in order to um, you know, uh, uh, protect the uh, students from being uh, infected, try to cut down the infection risk, uh, the height of the um, Partition barrier is based on, uh, you know, uh, the uh, experimental uh, study that we have uh, conducted uh, here. Uh, next, I'd like to share with you um, some of my ongoing works uh, and some future recommendation uh, in the next five to uh, ten minutes. Um, inspired by uh, the partition design and the flow dynamics uh, of the cough uh, jet, uh, we have further. Uh, investigated the effect uh, of the bed rest height in uh, uh, public transport uh, cabins in blocking cough jet and protecting uh, passengers in the front row. Uh, the same method of uh, you know this presented paper was used to measure the viral uh, droplet deposition. Three areas were sample. First, the top surface of the bed rest. Uh, which is a frequently touched surface by uh, other passengers. Second, the back surface uh, of the back rest, which may have a high uh, deposition weight, but less frequently uh, touched. Third, the head of the passenger in which if the deposition weight is high, it has a high risk to that particular passengers. Uh, the results show that the back rest height was an important uh, parameter. 
if the height is uh, 15 centimeter higher than the cough, uh, the PFU on the front passenger's head was greatly reduced. Uh, the flow field was also measured by uh, our PIV technique. It indicates that um, after the impingement on uh, bed rest, the cough jet continuously uh, travel upward instead of impinging on the front uh, passengers, which provides the protection ability from uh, droplet spray and uh, droplet deposition. Um, in a transport cabin environment, uh, you know, uh, uh, normally uh, gas power jets were installed to provide uh, some kinds of uh, personalized uh, ventilation for uh, the passengers uh, thermal uh, comfort. In fact, it has a high velocity and uh, can directly interact with the cold jet. Uh, we have studied the effect of uh, gas per jet on the cold jet and how it protects uh, passengers by using the same methodology that we uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, we can see that the deposited uh, PFU uh, goes down exponentially. Um, as the increase of the uh, gas per jet velocity uh, as shown in this diagram. It not only reduces the deposition on the passengers, but also reduces the deposition on the bed rest uh, surface. The PIV results uh, realized that the cough jet was bent, uh, was bent downward by uh, the gas per uh, jet. Um, gas per jet is a kind of uh, personalized uh, ventilation so uh, 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 using the idea of, uh, uh, you know, uh, airflow uh, bending in uh, personalized uh, ventilation, uh, how PV protects a passenger, uh, how PV protects a person uh, in a face-to-face uh, -face, uh, situation was also uh, investigated uh, here. When there's no uh, PV uh, airflow, the deposition on the face can be up to 3,000 uh, PFU. Uh, when the PV airflow was turned on, uh, the PFU was uh, uh, substantially reduced to uh, about a 300 PFU. Uh, the reduction was up to 90%. So uh, it does not exhaust the aerosol, but it uh, blocks the aerosol to reach a uh, person's uh, inhalation zone by bending the airflow. Therefore, PV can be uh, designed to add like an air curtain or a virtual partition to reduce uh, droplet spray uh, transmission, uh, but not for long range uh, airborne uh, transmission, which is a, uh, you know, a uh, different uh, story, uh, in fact. Uh, recently, we also collaborated uh, with uh, uh, the Faculty of Dentistry in the University of Hong Kong uh, to look at about aerosol control and infection risk in a uh, dental clinic uh, environment. Uh, this is the only, uh, only dental school in Hong Kong. A, uh, a funding from uh, the government was uh, awarded uh, recently uh, to uh, look at uh, uh, you know, uh, the, clinic, the dental clinic environment. Uh, the dental school is an open space design. It is well known that dental procedures uh, can generate uh, a large number of uh, aerosols. So uh, people are worried about the potential uh, transmission of the viruses to adjacent uh, uh, patients, uh, since it's not possible to uh, suspend the clinic to undergo major renovation work. Uh, so other engineering approaches are used to uh, mitigate uh, the disease uh, transmission uh, with during the uh, pandemic uh, period of time. We have been uh, looking at the effectiveness of using an extra oral suction uh, device, which is a kind of a uh, personalized uh, uh, PE uh, uh, exhaust uh, system. Different from uh, the PV mentioned above, uh, uh, mentioned before, uh, the PE exhaust and remove uh, aerosol from the environment uh, directly uh, or indirectly, uh, depending on the design. As uh, advised by a dentist, uh, the distance between the mouth of the patient and the uh, uh, suction head of the device should be at least uh, 15 centimeters for not uh, you know, um, uh, blocking the operation. Uh, the device is effective in aerosol uh, reduction if the distance is kept 
uh, within uh, 25, uh, 25 uh, centimeter. Uh, we find that such kind of uh, personalized exhaust uh, can be uh, quite effective in aerosol reduction when a number of operation parameters, uh, for example, flow weight, uh, distance, orientation are uh, optimized. Uh, these may uh, cause certain inconvenience to uh, dentists, but they are uh, quite acceptable. However, some of the dentists complain that the noise generator is annoying, unfortunately. So a noise control study is uh, you know, uh, also important in order to uh, improve the uh, usage uh, of, of the system. Uh, we know that one of the best engineering solutions is to carry out all dental uh, operation in the operation room that uh, you know, are ventilated to the specification as an isolation wall. Uh, however, it's not uh, possible to, uh, you know, uh, stop the clinic uh, completely in order to go through a major renovation. Uh, therefore, uh, we have a first study the existing ventilation system of the hospital. Uh, and then we, uh, we propose to install some uh, partitions in order to change the flow direction. Uh, the aim is to uh, redirect the bio aerosol uh, route so that the bio aerosol generated from uh, the patient would uh, reach the exhaust of the ventilation system uh, as quickly as possible without encountering other people in the room. Numerical simulation was uh, performed uh, to show the aerosol trajectory and uh, guide the installation of the partition in our work. We can see that after the installation of the partitions, the adjacent patient was uh, limited uh, you know, has limited aerosol uh, trajectory, indicating that, uh, you know, uh, there is some protection ability. Moreover, the uh, bow aerosol was uh, directed to the exhaust of the ventilation system uh, in the shortest uh, uh, path. This could be a new direction for uh, intervention measure if a major renovation is not possible in an existing uh, building in a uh, short period of time. So let's do a quick uh, summary uh, before we move to uh, Q and A section. Um, we are uh, we apply uh, you know uh, the same uh, uh, methodology. Uh, let me see. Um, I all right. This is a quick summary. Uh, different from uh, long range uh, microorganism inside a job net uh, uh, did not uh, affect the job net deposition in uh, short range and the impingement velocity. Uh, doesn't affect the uh, virus survivability uh, too much. Uh, viable virus distribution was found to be uh, quite well fitted by a uh, skewed normal equation. And this information helps to increase the accuracy of our risk assessment uh, model. And then a high viable virus deposition uh, region was identified, which contains about uh, or over 80% uh, of the viable depos deposited uh, viruses. Uh, using the flow field obtained, uh, we are able to obtain some information for uh, setting up some uh, guideline if we like to install a partition to uh, enhance uh, social distancing. Um, so uh, we, uh, we apply the same methodology in a uh, transport cabin environment. Uh, virus deposition on uh, bed rest and uh, bow aerosol dispersion due to uh, gas per uh, jet have also been uh, studied. Uh, personalized ventilation uh, can be a effective method. It acts like a virtual uh, partition itself. And um, extra oral device, uh, like kind of a PV, a PE is useful in removing dental bow aerosol. Uh, in an operating building, uh, redirecting the bow aerosol path by setting up physical uh, partition can be a new uh, approach. All right, so I, uh, I better stop here. Uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, thank the Research Grants Council of the Hong Kong uh, government to uh, support this work. And also, um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Wang and Dr. Fu in my group uh, to help me, uh, you know, uh, conduct uh, 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 the main part of the work and also uh, prepare uh, the slides uh, today. Thank you very much.
All righty. Uh, now we can go ahead and get into the question section. So let's see, it looks like the first question we have is, what is the surface tension and viscosity of the model cough solution? And secondly, how do your values compare with real biological mucosal fluid? All right. Um, uh, I need to refer back to uh, you know uh, the paper uh, for uh, for for these uh, uh, parameters. Um, they are um, uh, uh, they can be found uh, in the ASNT uh, paper that I uh, you know that we published uh, earlier. Um, we um, make use of a, a artificial uh, saliva uh, solution uh, to uh, simulate, uh, you know, uh, the cough that uh, uh, we are able to uh, generate. Um, uh, it is based on a, uh, you know, a, a, a recipe uh, that has been uh, published uh, by. Uh, you know, another group of uh, researchers a long time ago, uh, you know, following uh, some of the uh, real uh, figure that you are able uh, to find in uh, human uh, objects. And uh, so uh, when comparing to, um, you know, because this is a benign uh, uh, microorganism, uh, not uh, the real one. Uh, uh, but this is also a very uh, commonly used uh, technique, uh, especially when we are not uh, able to use uh, real, uh, you know, uh, pathogens uh, to do the experiment for uh, safety uh, reason. Uh, somehow, uh, uh, there's also debate about uh, how uh, accurate it is to uh, represent you know, the real uh, uh, pathogens uh, in the human subjects, uh, especially, um, uh, you know, the data for survivability is, uh, you know, uh, just a, a rough uh, estimate. Uh, we, we assume that the, um, uh, the benign uh, microorganisms can uh, represent, uh, uh, to a certain extent, uh, the behavior of the real one. Um, so I think this part may have some uh, uncertainty, uh, but the uh, aerodynamics part, uh, I think is, uh, you know, uh, not too far away uh, from the real one. Um, so, uh, but uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, information, I think uh, will be uh, useful uh, for us to uh, try to understand, uh, you know, the real situation, even though it may not be 100% representing uh, the real scenario. Okay. And the second question we have says, you gave recommendations for the height of partitioning. How about the width of the partition? Oh, I see. Uh, we, uh, well, if you look at the uh, results that we uh, presented uh, earlier, uh, in fact, uh, most of the, um, you know, um, uh, that posited uh, bow aerosol occur uh, in a very uh, small uh, region. This is why uh, uh, usually, for example, the width of a uh, of a uh, computer, uh, the width of the screen of the computer itself uh, is uh, good enough to, uh, you know, uh, contain uh, most of the um, uh, bow air. So this is why we didn't put down uh, specifically, uh, you know, the, uh, the dimension. Uh, but um, uh, let's say uh, half a meter or something like that should be, uh, you know, good enough. The more critical one is, is the height, uh, because uh, uh, sometimes we don't want to uh, set up a very high uh, partition. Uh, for the width, uh, usually, um, you know, uh, uh, in our design, we will be using like half a meter, one meter, you know, uh, something like that. Uh, they are, um, uh, uh, you know, wide enough uh, to uh, contain uh, the majority of the uh, bow arrow. So I think the height is a more important uh, parameter because um, uh, we don't want to make the uh, partition uh, too high um, in our design. 
Um, do we have any other questions before we adjourn? Oh, let's see. All right, yeah, there's a longer one. It says, uh, in regards to COVID transmission, can you comment on how effective individual partitions are? She says, many setups with partitions can result in trapping or concentrating aerosols, thereby limiting the effectiveness of ventilation schemes, which could counteract the benefit of limiting short range transmission. All right. Um... Uh, the difficulty is that if we uh, install uh, too many uh, partitions, um, you know, uh, it, it, it affects the um, uh, movement of the people in the room and also will uh, create other uh, operational uh, uh, issue. Um, for example, in the uh, dental uh, uh, clinic that I, I mentioned about uh, earlier. Uh, there are real um, dental procedures that we need to uh, uh, follow. This is why we are not able to, to install too many of these uh, partitions. So I think at the end, uh, we have to look at uh, the uh, actual um, physical environment, uh, whether we are talking about an office or we are talking about uh, a restaurant. Uh, or a, um, you know, uh, uh, dental clinic. Uh, there, there will be, you know, a difference in the number of people in a room. Uh, there will be a difference in the orientation of the people, um, whether they are, uh, you know, uh, sitting there or they are standing there. So I think all these will have uh, impact on uh, the final design. Uh, the results from our work, um, I think, uh, give some uh, indication to like, uh, you know, how high um the partition uh should be and uh what is the risk uh, level we are able to bring down uh, these are for reference only and uh at the end uh i think uh in our uh, real design process uh using uh cfd uh technique may be a, a good approach to in fact uh more uh carefully identify uh the risk uh of course, it has a lot to do with uh, how much resources we are able to bring into the uh, scenario. Um, so all these are factors that can uh, affect uh, the final uh, design and uh, also uh, whether we are able to accept uh, a, um, uh, a, a design solution that uh, gives you uh, high uh, effectiveness, but uh, less uh, you know, a convenience to the operation or uh, less convenience to uh, movement of the people, a higher uh, budget, et cetera. So all these are parameters that we need to put into consideration. Yeah. And another question that was asked says, do you know what size particles are responsible for transmitting COVID viruses? Oh, um, uh, well, this is a uh, 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 interesting uh, uh, question. Uh, as you may uh, remember uh, from the beginning of my talk, I, um, I, I, I discussed the three uh, different uh, modes of uh, transmission. Uh, if we are talking about a very uh, small aerosol, like submicron uh, aerosol, uh, they are able to uh, stay uh, longer uh, in the air, so they may be able to move uh, further away uh, for a very big one, all right? so like. Uh, about uh, more than 10 micron, 20 micron, uh, they settle down uh, more quickly. But somehow they may also be uh, deposited on uh, nearby uh, surfaces. So if we touch them, we will bring them uh, to our uh, mouth, uh, eyes, uh, causing infection. This is why uh, aerosol, uh, no matter you talk about small one or a very big one, I, I think they, they have a uh, chance uh, to be uh, causing the disease. Uh, it has a lot to do with, um, you know, uh, the, um, uh, for example, like the short range uh, uh, issue that we talked about here. Uh, you know, if we are able to uh, identify uh, where they get deposited on the surfaces and do more frequent uh, cleaning, uh, the risk of uh, getting infection uh, will be uh, lower. Uh, for air dis dispersion one, uh, I think it also 
uh, has a lot to do with the uh, concentration of the uh, viruses. So it's um, it's quite difficult to uh, comment, uh, you know, uh, exactly on on uh, what particular size uh, will be causing the infection uh, in that particular situation. Um, this is why it's uh, uh, extremely uh, difficult to uh, completely uh, prevent things from uh, happening uh, during the uh, pandemic. Uh, but I think what we are able to do is to uh, try to reduce the risk rather than uh, to say for sure that uh, you know there's no risk uh, there. Yeah. And it looks like our final question says, will this presentation be available for download and or email? Oh yeah, sure. Um, I uh, I can send you the um, uh, uh, the PowerPoint file and then uh, you can upload uh, on the web, uh, or you can uh, send me email. Uh, you know uh, to uh, to the address I I put down here uh, on the screen. Uh, I can uh, send you the uh, PowerPoint uh, file. Um, so I think that uh, you know yeah the answer is yes. Uh, you can you can. Uh, uh, download the uh, PowerPoint uh, file. Okay. Um, it looks like that's all the questions that we have.